Hey, good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're doing really well. Uh, my name is Ramon Osa, and today we're going to be going through. Uh, I was just checking one thing on the stream there. This is all kind of new to me. Today we're going to be going through your backhand. And if you've got an iCoach, well, you already know this is one of the most amazing tools that you can possibly use. But what we've learned is that some people actually um, have a few challenges with it. So what I'd like to do is show you a few drills that's gonna allow you to master this backhand of yours in a lot less time. And the first thing we gotta realize is this was all born out of a study done by Billie Jean King's team. And what they found was they looked at a thousand different players, a high speed video. And these are players of all ages, all at ability levels. And what they found out was that the amateur tennis players are off balance 90% of the time and they're mishitting the ball 80% of the time. And so it's kind of no wonder that a lot of us are frustrated because we get into a match and things, especially on the backhand, tend to fall apart. Well, it's because we're practicing off balance and we're practicing mishits. So we're gonna flip that around right now and I'm gonna show you a few drills here. Let's start with the two-handed backhand. And the first drill that you wanna do is, you know, kind of get comfortable distance from you and the ball is you're gonna take one swing at a medium speed and you're going to leave your eye where the ball was. So the ball's going to fly away, but your job is to just keep your eye perfectly still on an area basically right behind the ball. And what this is doing is it's reestablishing that balance that we know is so important on any shot that we're going to do. Okay, and you're also training your eye to stay still. So let's do that again. Take one swing and hold your finish. If you can stay there all day, you're good to go. But if you feel any tension in your body at all, no worries, just play around with it until you can feel totally relaxed. Again, my hip has come through here. I'm finished my shot. I'm looking over my left shoulder because I'm a righty. Um, and there's a perfect line between my eye, my hip, and the ball. And that is your power line. That is your optimum point of contact. All right, so this is the most crucial step if you're working on your backhand is this foundational part, your balance, and this is your eye. Okay, now the next thing we're gonna do is, well, let's do the same thing for the one-hander. We can't leave the one-handers out. I'll give you a hint, it's the exact same drill. So find a comfortable distance between you and the ball, hit the ball, hold your finish, and leave your eye where the ball was. Okay, and that should feel pretty solid. If it doesn't feel solid, just take a few extra swings until you feel like, oh yeah, I'm hitting the ball in the center of my strings. I feel totally relaxed, I'm balanced. And that's step one. That's how we're gonna memorize the stroke. Okay, now the next issue a lot of people have is their spacing. You know, they say, oh, I get too close to the ball or I, I don't get close enough to the ball. And so we're gonna fix that right now. And the way we're gonna do it is I want you to take the racket in your non-dominant hand. Okay, so if I'm a righty, so that's my lefty. And I want you to walk up to the device and I want you to get in the batter's box like you're going to hit a baseball. And when you feel like you're at the proper distance between you and the ball, then take the racket in your uh, both hands for the backhand, hit and hold the finish. Now, what I can feel is I was way too far away from that ball. So my spacing actually wasn't great. So I needed to be a little bit closer to the ball to feel that same shot that I had in step one. So let's do that again. Take the racket out of your hitting hand, and I'll explain why we do this in a second. Then climb in the batter's box, get your feet set, like it's almost like it's set in cement. And when you feel like you're there, take the racket back, hit the ball, but leave your eye where the ball was. And it starts to sound like a broken record there. Now, the reason this drill is so important is because a lot of times players are stepping and hitting at the same time. And to the brain, that's like a neurological nightmare in a way. And so um, what you wanna do is really work on getting into your position first and foremost, and then hitting the ball. By the way, if you're tuning in here and you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments. This is live, um, actually here with you. And just check one thing on the stream here. This is all live, you guys. Save changes. Okay, there we go. So let's try that one more time. This time we'll do it on the one-handed backhand. So if you're a righty, take the uh, racket in your left hand. Again, get in the batter's box. And when you feel like you're at the proper distance between you and the ball, take the racket back, hit and hold the finish, leaving your eye where the ball was. 
So what this drill is teaching you to do is to really master your spacing first. Okay, now we can progress this drill by getting a little bit further away from the device. Again, rack it in your non-dominant hand and then jog up, get your feet set, hit and hold the finish, leaving your eye where the ball was. Now, I just realized this is all live. So there's one crucial step that we left out here, and it's the secret of all the best ball strikers in the world. And I'm not talking about the top 10 players. I'm talking about the top three players. And that is the power of visualization. So since your eyes are no longer looking as you hit, since you're training your eye to stay still as you hit, what we've got to do is give the brain a very clear direction of where you're hitting the ball. Okay, and we have a very sophisticated, most of us have a very sophisticated instrument up here. Yes, my wife, sometimes it's not that sophisticated. Um, <laughs> but if we give it exact coordinates, we can start to program in where we're hitting this ball. So if you're practicing inside, that looks like a nail somewhere on a wall or a corner of a picture. I'm looking at the corner of a uh, picture. Um, and if you're doing it outside, maybe it's a blade of grass. And what you want to do is as you're hitting the ball, See if you can take that snapshot in your mind and without physically looking at it, see if you can see that image in your mind's eye. And what you're now starting to do with this is strengthening the visual component of the stroke. And the stronger your visual uh, component of the stroke is, the less you're gonna feel pressure, the less you're gonna worry about your technique, the less you're gonna think about the wind or your opponent or God knows what else. Uh, let's see, we've got a question. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, April, how does someone with multiple sclerosis play tennis when movement is, <coughs> when movement, excuse me, <coughs> have some water, babe. Oof. Um, when movement is affected by this condition. April, um, I'll be honest with you, I have no idea. I don't know much about uh, multiple sclerosis, but I would advise uh, to look at the work of Dr. Joe Dispenza, because uh, he's done some fantastic work on this and uh, some healings. I would look into that. Okay, the next thing we wanna do, now we've got our visual component in, so let's go ahead and go one more time, jog up to the device, get your feet set, visual target, and hit and hold. If you feel like you're wobbling all over the place, it just means that your balance is starting to correct itself. So keep going with that drill until you've got your spacing perfect and you can execute a clean stroke, leaving your eyes where the ball was and with a visual target in your head. This is the foundation, by the way, guys. This is what makes the difference between nailing that shot at 40-30 with the match on the line and possibly choking. Okay, so really wanna dial that in. Uh, and we can do the same thing with the one-handed backhand, jog up, get in position. Once you set your feet, do not move your feet, hit and hold, leaving your eye where the ball was. And again, with that visual target in your mind. Um, great. So any questions on that, go ahead and leave them in the comments and, uh, and we'll continue. So the next thing we want to do, um, the next thing we want to do is begin to work on our timing and our footwork. And we can do that on the iCoach on a six count. Okay, so I'll just show you what that looks like and then we'll talk about it. So we're hitting, we're moving, and we're looking. We're hitting, we're moving, and we're looking. Each time with a visual target in our head, I've got the corner of the painting in my mind's eye. Each time I hit the ball, and I'm trying to keep my eye still, but I'm not really thinking about that. I'm thinking about that in step one. So keep that ball moving and you're gonna notice as you hit it, sometimes you're hitting the ball as it coming, going away from you. Sometimes you're off balance. Sometimes um, your spacing is off. You're gonna make a lot of mistakes and that's totally fine. What you really wanna look for is your ability to correct yourself, okay? Because in tennis, you're going to have to correct yourself. Nobody can do it for you. So one more time, just a few things on the six count is you're not thinking about your stroke per se. You're really thinking about your timing and catching that ball as it comes towards you and really catching it right as the arm of the eye coach is perfectly vertical. 
right over that power bar in the middle. Okay, and again, this is all at a medium swing speed. When you do this, by the way, don't do what I just did and get out of breath. <laughs> do about five reps, do about 10 reps, and really you're just working on the visual target in your mind and then making sure that you get what we call Vimal in. And Vimal stands for visualize, hit, move, look. And the best players in the world do it in that sequence. In fact, yesterday I told the story of Roger Federer and John Isner. They had a side-by-side -side comparison. What they found was Federer was actually three times faster to the next ball. And the reason he was three times faster to the next ball was not because he was more fleet of foot, so to speak. It's because he had Vimal in the proper sequence. So as Roger finished his shot with his eye over the ball perfectly still momentarily, he was into his recovery with his eye still over the ball. Whereas Isner finished his shot, became still for a second, and then looked and then moved. So Isner had in fact lost two steps to the next ball. So you don't want to do that. You want to get Vimal in that proper sequence. So let's do it one more time, this time on the one-hander on a six count. And now you're just working on keeping that ball as it comes towards you, always with a visual target and really feeling a finish after each shot. So Vimal again stands for visualize, hit, move, look. And it's four instincts that you execute on the tennis court and the best players in the world do it in that order so you've always got a visual target even if you're practicing inside make sure that you've always got that visual on each and every repetition so you're building that muscle in to visualize and um, then when you go to the court when we go to practice on the court let's talk about that so here we're integrating um, perfect fundamentals pretty darn perfect fundamentals and you should be up around 80 to 90% solid from home. And that's in contrast to if you're training sort of traditionally, um, you'd be off balance 90% of the time and you'd be miss hitting 80% of balls. And that's no good. <laughs> that's why it comes out the way it does sometimes in a match. So we get to 80 to 90% solid here. And when we go to the court, what we're gonna be looking for is just working on the visualization skills of getting a ball fed to you from a ball machine, or from a coach or from a, you know, a hitting partner that's pretty steady. And you're just gonna work on keeping the visual target in your mind that you're honing from home. Okay, so that's how we're gonna practice um, your backhand for the next uh, day or two. So five to 10 minutes a day on this, by the way, gets you about a thousand repetitions a week. And if you're putting in 80, 90% solid repetitions with good fundamentals, and you're doing a thousand of those a week on any stroke, what we found is it takes about 6,500 repetitions to master that skill. And then you bring it to the court and you practice the way we discussed it here. And then you go out and play, you're gonna be on fire. Now, let me just tell you a couple of things. At home, we're working on Vimal on the iCoach. That's the, your instincts, okay? Visualize, hit, move, look. We talked about that. And if you're joining us a little bit late today, go back and watch this live stream. We kind of broke this all down. And then if once you get to the practice court, what you're gonna be looking to do is work only on your visualization skills. You don't wanna be futzing around with your technique on the practice court because you can master it a whole lot faster at home. You can download pretty much perfect technique and a couple of swings on this thing. And then when you integrate it with the moving ball, now you've got a rhythm in your body. You've worked on your spacing. We did that in step one. You've got your footwork. You've got your timing. You've got your eye quiet over the ball. You're practicing your visualization skills. And I'll tell you, when you go to the practice court and you see that ball, the only thing you're thinking about is where, where do I wanna hit it? You don't think about keeping your eye still. You don't think about your technique. You certainly don't think about um, anything else other than getting to the ball and visualizing where you're gonna hit the ball. So if you guys have any questions on that, let me know in the comments um, and we'll go to the match court now. So now you've got your backhand, you've got your practice program with the iCoach. And by the way, if you don't have an iCoach, uh, you can get one um, and they are invaluable for 
mastering skills really quickly. And what we found with our students is in a couple of weeks, they start saying stuff like, oh, my mind has never been quieter. Um, I'm more focused. Of course, I'm hitting the ball harder and more consistently and more, more spin and more accuracy. But it just makes sense. You know, once the foundation is laid and you're balanced, you've got your eye still, you're visualizing, you've got your spacing and timing, you're loose, of course your shots are going to get better. So it's about doing the practice, but it's about practicing really the right way and finding ways to ingrain that muscle memory. So now we go to the practice court, you work on the visual and you set up targets all over the court. And what we suggest is once you've got your target area set up, so let's say I'm working on down the line backhands, I might have a really small target over there, uh, like a little cone. And then around that cone, I might have a box of bigger cones so that you end up having this really small dot as your visual. And then within that target area would be considered close enough. And what you're looking for is the ability to self-correct on the practice court. That's the way we're gonna measure your success. So let's say you hit one into the target area, then you miss one, and then you miss another one, and then you miss another one. And then on the fourth one, you're right back on track. That would be a four to one ratio meaning it took you four shots to correct yourself. And that's something that we can measure and we can measure it with the size of the box and we can measure it with how long it takes you to self-correct. Over time, what you're gonna find is that's gonna go down to three to one and then two to one. And eventually you might get to one to one and one to one is where you miss a target. And on the very next shot, you've actually triggered a solid hit. You've triggered an accurate shot. And that's what the best players in the world do. They all miss. They just are able to correct themselves faster and not let it linger. And this is a perfect segue. And once so you've got your down the line target, once you get to a two to one ratio, meaning, you know, you miss a couple times in your back, you miss a couple times in your back, then switch the target, then go to cross court and do the same thing. Same size box, cone right in the middle, work on hitting that target. And once you get to two to one there, then you might move it to a short angle or you might move down the center doesn't really matter where your targets are. You just want to have it clear in your mind of where they are so that as you're hitting the ball on the practice court, you are now strengthening that visual target and you're really working with that feedback from your brain to get the ball to go where you want it to go. And again, this is all predicated that you've trained on the eye coach first. You've trained your spacing, you're training your footwork, your timing, keeping your eyes still, the visualization, all the things that we've talked about previously on this live stream. And again, if you haven't, uh, if you're joining us late, go back and watch the beginning of this because we really worked on how to train this. Now we've got our at-home practice. We've got our on-court practice. The last phase, if you're a competitive player, is obviously the match court. And here's where a lot of people get tripped up. They go into competition and they're thinking about all kinds of stuff. They're thinking about their technique, they're thinking about the score, they're thinking about that bad call they made, they're thinking about the wind, they're thinking about their doubles partner and whether or not they're going to disown them because they missed that volley. And we all know how this kind of goes. So what we found is what we really want to do is trigger your athletic instincts, those same instincts that our ancestors used to run away from saber-toothed tigers and to you know, women have used to lift cars off of their babies. When those instincts are triggered, you become superhuman and you can do things you never thought would be possible. And the way that we do that is actually with a short phrase that Lenny Schloss coined. And again, Lenny is the front hand man of Billie Jean King. Billie Jean King obviously won 39 Grand Slams. So she knew a thing or two about this. And that is, the phrase is, I got to get into my best position possible as quickly as possible. And in the beginning, this might take some conscious thought. Of, that's my one thought as that ball's coming. I got to get to the ball. I got to set up and then I got to trust my instincts and the instincts that we're training at home is Vimal. And again, if you haven't watched that yet, go back and watch the, uh, the training here and you'll see exactly what we meant. So when you get to a match, your only job, except for the serve, and we'll tackle the serve in a future live stream, your only job is to keep the one thought in your awareness. And that is, I got to get to my best position I can as fast as I can. 
And if you're training the stroke at home and you're training those instincts and you're training the ability to visualize, those will come out because it's just repetition. You've built in the muscle memory to the point where you're no longer thinking about it. You're just on autopilot. So that's how you can train the backhand starting from home with the eye coach. And again, if you don't have an eye coach, you can grab one here. Um, it is, in my opinion, the absolute best training device you can possibly invest in uh, because it lets you do so many things. So we did the forehand yesterday, the backhand today, and we'll go through all of the strokes uh, in the coming live streams. Again, if you guys have any questions at all about this, if you're watching this a little bit later in the day, um, leave them in the comments, whether you're watching it on Facebook or YouTube or LinkedIn. I think we're all over the place. Um, and again, this is Ramon Osa. I want to thank you guys so much for watching this live stream, and I'll see you real soon. Thanks.